one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> my friend Jody Fisher and we just love what we're doing keeping jazz alive and guitar music which is very important to us so we hope you stick around and have some fun with us It's a lot of fun, my buddy. Well, rhythm changes are pretty universal. You know? That's true. <laughs> Everybody plays them. Uh, what What do you think the most important consideration is when improvising? And that's a big question. It is, uh, and, and there are a lot of sides to that. I think people have different reasons for doing what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is to make it interesting. Uh, I don't like playing something that is predictable. I try okay. to stay away from that but yet be melodic enough to, to be relative. Mm -hmm. And you can think about the melody to the song, you know, uh, while I'm playing, and that's very important to me. So I think that element is, uh, is, is really um, essential to being a good soloist. Do you think it's important for people to learn a lot of songs? I, knowing a lot of melodies leads to better melodic developing development in your own solo? You brought a, a great question to mind, or oh, a great point. Uh, how can you play a song to a person if you don't know it yourself? How are you going to convince them of what the song is all about? Mm -hmm. And a lot of musicians do it. They just get on the bandstand and start improvising. But they don't know what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we pick a song that people, everybody should know, we'll know when they start playing that they are the only ones who, doesn't know, who don't know <laughs> the song. The public knows the song, yeah. but they don't. And now that's a crime. Because what you end up with is a guy who's playing a lot of notes, and he's trying to prove a point, but it isn't the point. The point is, this song is important, and how do we bring to mind and show them the value of the song that we're playing? How do we show them how important that song is and how beautiful that song is? So that, I try to keep the melody alive. And my advantage as, as a singer has really helped me to uh, keep that point in mind. I would think so. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, where, where would you go to make something unpredictable? Like in rhythm changes, for instance. Mm -hmm. where, where would you go? What kinds of tools would you use? My coming home changes, we were in the key of B flat. Mm -hmm. And on the 2-5 portion of that, instead of playing, instead of playing, I play. So I incorporate. See, they think they know where I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I play. So, you know, I just try to keep them guessing at where I'm going to go, but we're going to be where they want us to be at the end. Sure. You know, hopefully they'll agree with what my story, you know, <laughs> hopefully, you never know. But that's the, the, uh, the beauty of playing live. You know, you begin to feel, you feel the audience out, you try to bring them along. But as long as they're interested and they're listening, right. that's the point. We keep their interest and they're glad they came. Now on a slightly more technical level, it looks to me like what you're doing is thinking of all kinds of alternative changes and improvising around those no matter what the section changes are. Is that, is that what well, you're see, doing? it's all relative. 
Okay. And my father used to tell me that, and I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, man, think like Charlie Parker. Your stuff is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what do you mean, Dad? I mean, these are the changes. You know, we're playing these little funny little rock tunes. Oh, Sherry. Oh, da, 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 da. You know, that's the way the song went. I said, Dad, well, that's the way it goes. He said, you don't have to play that crap, man. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about, man? He said, don't you think like Charlie Parker? Think chromatically. I said, you mean? He said, yeah, that's what it does. So I tried that. I said, that doesn't mean anything, man. How you going to play? Oh, Sherry. Oh, I know. <laughs> but that's not what he was talking about. Okay. He was talking about melting the changes together. He was talking about... <laughs> Never being stuck, because everything is relative to the key. Right. See, so this, this flat third is only a flat third. It's not the end of the world. Is <laughs> it? Or if I go, I go. Or if he's playing a dominant seven chord at the end. We're still going to get home if we keep moving chromatically. Okay, I understand saying. what you're saying. So, so melting the changes together is yeah. hooking them all together with, with chromatic lines. That's what that that is really beautiful stuff. Um, thanks, George, for that. And we'll be back with more on a similar topic. Mm -hmm.